In the previous videos, I've laid some groundwork uh, that will consider what these curves have to look like, and we've explored that through those extension videos. Now, if you've skipped over those, that's fine. Um, and really, I want to set up what this set of videos is going to be considering. So we're going to be looking at a particular type of polar curve, uh, Limousons. And they're of the form R equals A plus B cosine theta. And what we're going to do is we are going to consider what happens when we change the values of A and B. So we're going to look at, firstly, R equals 1 plus 2 cosine theta, then R equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta, and then R equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Okay, uh, And effectively what I'm doing is, we're, is looking at cases where A is less than B, which is going to be this case, A is equal to B, and then A is greater than B. So when we look at sketching this curve, the first thing that you're going to want to think about is that cosine theta goes anywhere between minus 1 and 1. Okay, Just think about the regular cosine curve. Cosine of theta has got to go between minus 1 and 1. So if that's the case, then at its least, this is minus 1. So we would have 1 plus 2 lots of minus 1. So 1 take away 2, so minus 1. So the lowest that r can go is minus 1. And the largest that r can go is if the cosine of theta is 1. 1 plus 2 lots of 1, so 1 plus 2 is 3. So that means that r is going between minus 1 and 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to sketch this in a polar sense yet. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch it theta against r. So as if it's just a regular uh, Cartesian curve. So I know that it's got to go between minus 1 and 3. So minus 1. Just put that in. Then we've got 1, 2, 3. OK. Right. So what is this going to look like? Well, at theta is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So we start at 1 plus 2 lots of 1. So that means we're starting up here. Okay, And this makes sense because what we've got here is a cosine curve that has been stretched parallel to the r-axis, in this case, by factor 2, and translated um, by, the, by the vector 0, 1. Okay? So if we do the stretch first and then the translation, that's what it's going to look like. So originally it would look between minus 1 and 1, then it's been stretched to minus 2 and 2, and then it's been translated up. But, so it's now between minus 1 and 3. Okay? So the curve is going to look something like that, where this point here is going to be 2 pi, and it's Central values will be there because it's going through around 1. So that point there, that point there, that point there. OK. So this would be pi. This would be pi over 2. And this would be 3 pi over 2. OK. So I'd probably be interested in where those points are, and that will be when this is equal to 0. And that will happen when uh, cosine theta is equal to, so take the one from both sides, divide through by 2, so we're looking at cosine theta is equal to minus 1 half. Okay, so... Let's just find that out. So inverse cosine of minus a half is 2 pi over 3. So that's 2 pi over 3 there. And this point will be 2 pi take away the 2 pi over 3, so 4 pi over 3. 
Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to help us sketch what the polar curve actually looks like. Okay, right, so let's try and do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label it just so I've got an idea because I know that the R's got to go between minus 1 and 3. So here we are, 1, 2, 3 away from the origin. And let's do the same here. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Okay, so starting from uh, theta is zero, okay, we are, are at R is three. So we're starting here. Then what's happening is that the distance between the origin and the curve is decreasing down to zero when I get to two pi over three. So at pi over 2, it we're at 1. So by the time we've gone around a pi over 2, we are at 1. So it's got to go through that point there. So the curve has got to look something like that. Okay, so we're de R is decreasing as we go around, and we've got to go through 1 on that vertical axis. Okay. Then... At 2 pi over 3, we're going to get to 0. So at an angle of 2 pi over 3, we've got to get around to 0, like so. So that angle there, so from there to around at that point, will be 2 pi over 3. Then R goes into negative values, OK, because we go down all the way down to minus 1 when we get to pi okay now theta is increasing okay so theta has gone around to pi by this point but r is negative which means that we're actually going to be over here at this point when we get around to pi now the curve when you sketch this when you go into negative values of R, we go into dash lines. So we represent that as dash lines rather than a solid line like I've got here, or solid curve. So we need to go around, okay, and get to 1. Then we're coming back to the origin to 4 pi over 3. Okay, now 4 pi over 3 is down here. But because we're negative, the values of R, we're coming in at that angle there, or that angle rather. So, da, 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 dash line still because we're negative R. Da, 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 da. We come back round. And then, past that point, we're going to get to 3 pi over 2, where we're at 1. Now, 3 pi over 2, all the way around, one distance away from uh, the origin. So we're around to there, and we're back into positive values of R, and so the curve goes back into a solid curve. Okay, so make it clear on your, on your diagram, on your sketch, that you've got dashed lines here. Okay. Past that point, um, we're going back around to 2 pi, R is equal to 3. So remember, R is your distance away from the origin. So we're coming back round to 2 pi. So this bit I always find difficult to sketch. Um, let's try again. It's got to be somewhat symmetric. That'll do. That'll do. The more I kind of like fiddle about with it, the, the less good it's going to be. OK? So this is what we refer to as... Uh, a limousine, okay, and you get this loop inside when your value of a 
is less than your value of b. And we will see what happens when you get um, when a and b are equal, and what happens when a is greater than b in the coming videos.